Long ago, Victoria was part of the colossal supercontinent of Gondwana. Over vast geological timescales, the relentless march of plate tectonics tore this supercontinent apart, causing significant transformations in Victoria's landscape. One such transformation was the creation of the Otway and Gippsland basins, during the separation of Australia and Antarctica. The region that would one day be known as Melbourne was a land of mountains and valleys at this time, but as the late Oligocene transitioned into the early Miocene, significant geological transformations occurred here, forming the Port Phillip Sunkland. With the conclusion of the last ice age, sea levels rose, flooding the lower areas of the Sunkland and creating the Port Phillip Bay we know today. I've received many comments throughout the years claiming Port Phillip Bay is an ancient supervolcano. I'm going to address that question slash statement and I'll also be showing you the volcanics that underlie the bay in this video. We have some very cool things to look at, and we'll be using geophysical techniques to peel back the layers to see what anomalies lie beneath the salty waves of the bay. Before it became a bay, the Sunklin region was characterised by impressive mountains and valleys shaped by powerful geological forces, including compression and orogeny. Rivers winding through this landscape likely carried alluvial gold from the surrounding goldfields, hinting at the hidden treasures within the earth. The Melbourne zone witnessed numerous tectonic events, including the collision between Tasmania and Victoria around 430 million years ago. Yet the Port Phillip Sunkland formation stood out as a special event in this narrative, and was potentially further driven by magmatic activity. Regarding remarks about this bay being a supervolcano, that isn't true, unfortunately, as it'd make great clickbait, true? But no, this area is a rift zone, so before the most recent rise of sea levels it was a depression that hosted vast swamplands. Underneath the waters of Port Phillip Bay, traces of the newer volcanics province are visible, with evidence of volcanic eruptions. One of these eruptions occurred before the area was submerged, while another seemingly happened after the bay had filled with water indicating a dynamic and active geological history. Intriguingly, there are indications of a hidden ancient river beneath the bay. This river, which was covered by lava from one of the volcanic eruptions, has turned into what is known as a deep lead a buried Paleo River. The Paleo River, the ancient outlet of the Yarra, contains iron-rich basalt, making it detectable through magnetic scans. Being a deep lead, this undoubtedly harbours a rich history, and quite likely carries a significant amount of alluvial gold. But prior to this, well that's a different story, this land was as mountainous as the areas to its west and east, but now it's obscured beneath the flat, seemingly low-lying ground that Melbourne was built upon. Even though this subsidence occurred though, the rocks don't lie. All one needs to do is drive along the Eastern Freeway to see the many folds exposed by the cutting for vast distances, showing anticlines, refolded faults and more. The effect of this rift zone on the land surrounding it will be a topic for another video, as it likely led to recent deformation, and I will most likely make a video on the road cutting shortly too. Because if you thought I was obsessed with the one in Ballarat, oh, you have no idea how much I'm obsessed with these ones now. If I could camp out and observe it day and night, trust me I would. I just want everyone in Melbourne to stop using the Eastern Freeway for, like, I don't know, a week. So I can walk up and down it, mapping the faults, digging holes, and marvelling at the wonders of this subsided land, which has hidden its true mountainous nature for so damn long. When I recently moved back to Melbourne, one of the predominant questions I needed to answer was what happened to the mountains here? Surely it couldn't have out-eroded the mountains to its east and west. And now I know it didn't out-erode them, it just experienced massive subsidence and crustal thinning as a result of this rift. And I don't know why this rift has occurred, I can't really wrap my head around it to be honest. And neither can the geologists that are currently studying it, it's weird. I don't know what it's associated with, and it's it's really bugging me. It's like an itch you can't scratch, you know? Not in a junky way, like, you know, it's like the middle of the night and I have an itch right in the middle of my back, right in that spot that you can't fucking reach. So yeah, anyway, um, back to it. So along with that, think of the rift event like the uncoiling of a slinky. It would have opened this land up, thinning the once very thick crust out, and it did so within the past 30 million years. Like, what an absolute mindfuck. 
So Melbourne is undoubtedly full of minerals everywhere. I'm beginning to understand the geology of this area so much more now which is instrumental in aiding any mineral exploration that I undertake here. Now to be clear, I'm still trying to ascertain the extent of the rift. It needs to be clarified that research is still ongoing. I'm attempting to utilize magnetic and gravity scans to see whether or not I can assemble any loose pattern by cross-referencing them with the topography of specific areas. Doing so will allow me to greater hone in on where to explore. Though early, I believe I have a rough idea of the extent of the actual rift itself. And this is 100% speculative, but in my eyes, the area of Port Phillip and Greater Melbourne has opened up from here. And fault lines could be the extent of it. So yeah, this rift is very understudied and suspected to be inactive, but its status could change with more research. If it is active, then recent earthquakes in Melbourne would force geologists to have an additional element to consider for the causation of it. So yeah, like I said before, adding to the mystery is a series of volcanic activities known as the Older Volcanics, which occurred some 20 million years ago. Is there a link between these and the formation of the Sunkland? This question remains a cryptic chapter in Victoria's Geological Chronicle. Despite ongoing research, many details about the exact boundaries and full extent of the Port Phillip Sunkland still need to be clarified. This merely adds another layer of intrigue to Victoria's complex geological history. As we delve into this rich history, we will uncover more fascinating insights about the extraordinary transformations Victoria's landscape has undergone over millions of years. It's a story that's still being written, one discovery at a time. Thanks for watching.